Arrow, Season 3, Episode 11, entitled Midnight City. I just got done watching this episode. And man, oh man, did I love this episode. It started off with what I thought was them re-showing the scene when Felicity was telling Oliver not to leave, to face Ra's al Ghul, that she's afraid he'll die. But then it changed when he said that he would stay because he loved her. And I thought, okay, huh, what's going on? Until Oliver starts to spit up blood, and that was pretty horrific. Seeing the sword in his chest and Felicity's kind of watching him die. It's Oliver having this dream. Which makes me think, okay, well, that confirms anyone's suspicion over the fact that Felicity, at least at this moment, is Oliver's true love. He at least thinks of her that way. So that's a little interesting. And throughout the episode, you get bits of Maceo, who has betrayed the League of Assassins, in a sense. And he's risking a lot by not only saving Oliver's life, but he's now protecting him, trying to keep him alive. He has his, I guess, ex-wife, Tatsu. I don't know what happened to their relationship or what could have happened to their son. But uh, the moment when the lead comes in and he was forced to kill them to protect the two, and then he cut his own throat to make it seem like it was Oliver doing so, I don't know how he's going to stay in the league and convince Roz that he didn't have anything to do with Oliver still being alive. Because you got to figure that Roz al Ghul already knows their past. But let's talk about Laurel as Black Canary because we go back to Starling City and we see Laurel in action saving this woman in an alley from this guy. And... I know people say that it's too soon. I know people say that it's too easy to have Laurel, who she's only had a few boxing lessons or training from that that guy. So to say that she's ready to be a, a superhero or a crime fighter, it is laughable. But you have to admit that they at least not only addressed it, but they made it almost the focal point of this episode for her that she she probably would have gotten killed by this guy in the alley if it wasn't for Roy, uh, Arsenal, Red Arrow, whatever you want to call him. And I like that uh, you had several different people talking to her and, and almost yelling at her, saying, what the fuck are you doing? They even pointed out the fact that you're not Sarah, you're not your sister, you're not as good. You're, you just you can't expect to put this mask on and expect to be able to do what she does. And it's almost like that's been the criticisms or that's been... The comments from everybody that I've seen online who don't like Laurel as a character. I don't I don't get the hate for Laurel as a character. I admit that, that her becoming Black Canary started out rushed, but now I'm I'm into it. I'm for it. I, I at least want to see where it goes. I like that she's not just already a badass, that she is having to pay her dues and work her way towards it. Let's talk about Thea. Because Thea does not want to leave Starling City, even though Malcolm has warned her, has told her that they're in danger. And, okay, I like that. I like that she's just not quick to run and leave like she did at the end of last season. Because now, like she said, she's not afraid anymore. Malcolm trained her to conquer fear in many ways. So she wants to stay and fight. And even when Malcolm tells her as much as he tells her, she still isn't afraid. There was a moment when uh, that DJ character came up to her, and I thought, oh yeah, this fucking guy, like, and and they're talking about, oh, you know, we haven't talked to each other lately, clearly they, they like each other, and I was just rolling my eyes, like, I don't give a fuck about this DJ and her side plot with him, or whatever romance is starting to brew. I was hoping, or I would rather, see Thea with Roy. And I, I, I couldn't figure out why we have separated the two until the end of the episode, obviously. But I even liked when Roy went to talk to Malcolm. He followed him home and he stepped up to him. It was, it was something that I was surprised that Roy did. It made him look uh, tougher and, 
and stronger than I think he has been. And even though Malcolm didn't back down, I'm sure Roy earned some level of respect or at least something from that. Detective Lance. I feel so bad for this guy, for this character, for everything that he doesn't even know that he's going through. He so he sees on the news uh, some someone with their camera phone recorded Black Canary out on the streets back in Starling City, and he thinks, "All right, Sarah's back. My daughter's back, but she hasn't called me. She hasn't weird, right?" But he thinks that she's alive. He's even bringing it up to Laurel, and Laurel doesn't really know how to react. It's almost like she didn't even think about that. Like, holy crap, what do I tell my dad if he finds out about that? So what they do with this is Laurel, with the help of Felicity, uh, calls her dad and pretends to be Sarah. They have this thing with the voice modulator to make her sound enough like Sarah, and fuck. That's where I draw the line. That's where I say, this is unacceptable. You can't, you can't, you can't pretend to be Sarah to your dad. I know, in a sense, she is pretending to be Sarah when she puts that costume on and goes out on the streets to be Black Canary. In that sense, yes, but when you're talking about your own father, talking about your flesh and blood, and your I know she was lying before, but this is a different level of lying. You're afraid on what him finding out that Sarah is dead, what that would do to him, his heart, I know. But what is this going to do to him when he finds out that you were lying? I just was, I, I could not believe that they were doing this. It, I, I don't know what was worse, the phone call or when she met with him. Sure, she was in the shadows and a little far away, but she virtually met with him face to face and still pretend to be Sarah. And he's so confused and he doesn't get why she's being so distant. I just felt so bad for Lance. And fuck, I don't. How much longer can you continue with this? It's, it's a situation where, from a writing standpoint, I don't know what else you could have done to avoid this. I, at least I'm glad they addressed it. But still, I, I just, I don't know how this is going to make Laurel look. With so many fans who already dislike Laurel, this isn't going to do her any favors <laughs> by doing something as messed up as this. Now, I did like seeing Laurel as an attorney when their room got attacked and those three men got kidnapped and she was interrogating the shit out of one of the guys and she was even threatening to plant evidence to pin him for a crime that sure he didn't commit but just her her gumption her her willing to do anything that it took to get this information i was impressed it seemed like that was something that oliver himself would have done so i like that vinnie jones as a villain i already said last week how much i love him as a villain but even here he he took it up to a different notch when he kidnapped uh the three men and then i love the moment where roy and laurel went after them in costume and they virtually failed they especially roy uh acting on impulse shot an arrow at Vinnie Jones and that pissed him off and he killed one of the one of the victims and that that put a lot of things into perspective not just for Roy who probably realized at that moment that this he already knew it's hard without Oliver but you know without having somebody there t to map this all out plan it out tell him what to do when you act on instinct you're risking people's lives and he found that out the hard way. And also Laurel, who not only got a first-hand look at how dangerous this all is and how much, how easy it is for somebody to die. She saw somebody die right in front of her. But it reminded her of her sister, and she was conflicted. She even talked about not wanting to put the costume on. Of course, in that same breath, when Felicity goes to talk to her, check up on her, because she's now figured out that what Laurel is doing. I mean, I like that Felicity was going to talk her out of it, but when she got the phone call on how they needed somebody to go after Vinnie Jones, I, 
I, I didn't understand why Felicity then looked at Laurel and said, okay, I think I can get Black Canary. It's like, you went into this room to tell her not to do this under any circumstances, and then because you get a phone call, you are just quick to do it. I mean, I get that I liked how she went back to Roy and Diggle, and said, look, the Oliver's mission isn't over, it's now our mission, and we can't stop doing this. I like that speech. It's just the the switch for her, I thought, came too quick. Now, uh, the, the moment at the end, I will also give Laurel some credit. I mean, she didn't back down from Vinnie Jones, and, and uh, so I just like seeing her go right in there and try to stop him. And the funniest moment, though, of the episode was definitely when Felicity went up to Roy Palmer and she asked him for keys to his helicopter and he looked at her like she was crazy and he said that his helicopter doesn't have keys. Now, I found that really hilarious between his delivery and Felicity's reaction of not realizing that helicopters don't have keys but then later on she comes back and says oh, it turns out your helicopter did have keys and that that kind of ruined the joke for me. I thought it was much funnier when there wasn't keys. Uh, but let's talk briefly about the flashbacks because not only did that help connect with Maceo and Oliver in China, but I always, for some reason, I don't know why, I think it's because I like Kelly Hu so much, but seeing China White in these flashbacks are, are very cool. She just, she has a unique look to her and she's she's very cold and, and menacing as a villain so I'm glad that again that they have figured out a way to bring her back and it's a little weird to think about the fact that I mean for for all this time we were convinced that Oliver spent five years on an island where now we see that one of those years at least was spent in China so It'll be interesting to see how he ends up back on the island. I'm still trying to figure out what Amanda Waller exactly wants from him. But I'm sure we'll find that out in due time. Now, the end of the episode ends with a pretty good cliffhanger. As annoyed as I was with this fucking DJ and what I thought was going to be just uh, CW uh, teen romance shit, we find out that he is a member of the League of Assassins. When he finds out Thea is not leaving, he calls uh, Maceo, representing Ra's al Ghul, and, and says that they're not leaving. So that completely surprised me. He was speaking the language. I, I totally didn't see that coming. And see, that's why I think this show is, is much better than what you would expect from a CW show. I mean, I know CW shows have all stepped up with a lot of their shows lately, but when my mind instantly thinks, oh, they're doing a, a, a teen romance or a love triangle with Roy and, and them, but no, it, it ends up being a big plot point of the story. It's connected to the League. I like that. I can't wait to see how and when Ra's al Ghul figures back into all of this. So guys, that was my thoughts on this episode. Clearly, I, I loved it. I cannot wait, because judging from those previews, Oliver not only comes back, but it's a big, huge war in the city. Wow. <laughs> this show is awesome. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you saw this episode too. What did you think of it? Like, comment, subscribe. Later!